Hey everybody, and welcome to another PSPP tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to continue with t-test and talk about a uh, independent samples t-test. So here we, where we're talking about two groups, talking about two groups, and whether or not those two groups are different from one another. So let's jump right into it. Here I have some data open from previous videos uh, in this tutorial series. And we are going to compare con this condition variable. Uh, I have two conditions, one and two. So that's just what we're going to do. And as far as, uh, as far as our dependent variable is concerned, I'll probably just use CRT average. Okay, so it's the average score of each of these CRT uh, questions. And the CRT is the cognitive reflection test. This is the original three from uh, Frederick 2005. So we are going to jump in to that. So let's go right through it. But before we do, before we do that, I want to check something because this is uh, important for how to really read the data output a little bit better. So we're going to go to variable view. And we're going to scroll up to the top because that's where our variables are here. And we're going to go to condition. Okay. Oh, scrolled a little bit too much. There we go. We're going to go up to condition. So that's C-O-N-D here, condition. So it's a numeric variable. And that's just because it has numbers in there. But it's not really a numeric variable. It's technically a categorical variable. Now, we could add a label to this if we want. So this is um, a, a visual condition, right? And And this will show up as its label in all the uh, dialog boxes that pop up. So instead of C-O-N-D, it'll be visual condition. So here we have that. But really what I want to talk about is value labels. So what I want to do is I want to show you this value labels box. This is really important for categorical variables if you want to read them a little bit better than um, what they actually are. So here we have uh, an and here I have them already listed, but let's go ahead and remove them. Let's just remember that one is text and two is picture. So let's remove these. Okay, so how you do this is you put in the value here, and then you put in what the value label is. What's the group name? So that is text. And then we're going to add this, and you can see that it adds in some syntax with this. So it uses this syntax information for use in the output, right? And so it's one equals back tick. Let's show that a little bit. So that's back tick, the, the, the string itself, and then apostrophe. It's not two apostrophes, it's back tick. So it's very important to recognize. And then let's add in two for picture. And then we're going to add that. And then here we have what we were what we started with here, right? Two equals back tick, the word picture apostrophe. Okay? And then we click OK. And uh, then we're back to where we were, square one. Uh, what to do with missing values, how to uh, handle columns, and what to do with this. Now, here is where you change the actual kind of measure it is. So measure is either scale, or, uh, scale ordinal, or nominal, going uh, uh, bottom from to top here. So if you have a nominal variable, if you have an ordinal variable, or if you had a scale variable. Scale is all continuous. This is interval or ratio scale variables. Ordinal would be rank items, rank cat ranked categories. Likert scale variables would go in here unless you want to do some arithmetic on them, which is a little shaky. Um, theoretically, Likert scale variables are ordinal, but many people treat them as scale variables so they can, you know, play with the space in between, right? That's just a convention that's that's used. And then nominal are purely mutually exclusive categories. And so this was already selected as a nominal variable because that's what it is. It's two different groups. Okay. And it's an in 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 an input variable. So that's how you have to set it up first, just to make output easier. You don't have to set it up like that. Just to make it easier, I think, is really what it comes down to for me. Let's go back to data view because data view 
Well, I guess you can do it anywhere. Uh, you can do it from data view or variable view. But if you do switch to the output, the uh, window options change, the menu options change. So let's go to analyze and let's go to compare means. And we're going to go down to independent samples t-test. So we're going to click on that again. Let's expand this. Come on now. Let's expand this. Okay, make it bigger. Just, just so you all can see it, you know. And we are going to put in uh, visual condition. I did not type that well, but <laughs> so we're going to put that here as our grouping variable. And it, as you can see, it removes the label in these two boxes. It just puts in the variable name, how it exists in the name column, not the labels column, which if I move this over, right, the visual, good stuff. <laughs> Always happy to laugh at my mistakes here. And much like with the one sample t-test, we can um, put as many independent independent samples t-tests as we want and it will do them sequentially it will just put them in order which is really really nice so what i'm but i'm just going to do the one so we can just look at it so we're going to click on crt average that's a the scale variable icon there and we're going to put it over into test variable um before we go as you can see okay here is grayed out we can't click on it yet because we have to define our group so we need to tell PSPP, what we're doing with this, and it brings up a gigantic little tab here. Um, so group one value, this is far too, this is far bigger than it needs to be. Uh, group value one is one, and group value two is two. Awesome. Okay, so now that we've defined that, we can, uh, we can go. And as you notice there, when I clicked on define groups, and it opened it up, if I click on define groups, um, I'm just using the numerical value here. I don't actually have to use the label. I can just use the numerical value. Okay, back to this window here. It's a little buggy on Macs. I don't know if it's a buggy like this on uh, on PCs, Windows. Uh, and then now before we click on OK, let's click on options to see what options we have available. And again, the options for t-tests and SPSS just across the board aren't great and because PSPP is a clone of SPSS uh, in, 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 in the loving sense we don't really get a lot of options and as you can see it's two options um, what our confidence interval value is and we can increase it or change it to whatever and what we do with missing values case by case or excuse me analysis by analysis and now um, we're going to click on OK. And it will do the computation. We click on over the output. And here we have, so this is the uh, from the previous uh, one sample t-test. Here is our t-test variables equals CRT. That's our DV. Groups equals condition. One comma two. That was our definition here. And then missing values is analysis by analysis, and then our criteria uh, confidence intervals 0.95 or 95%. So we get some group statistics. We get uh, means uh, and standard deviations as well as standard errors and N, right? So here's our groups, text versus picture. You can see instead of one and two, it puts in those labels, which this is where our previous setup pays off. So we have text versus picture, 51 versus 51. Hooray! Um, means and standard deviations uh, are essentially the same, which made us sad. So you can see uh, as to why we were sad here, um, because uh, that those means are exactly the same. And so we're going to end up with a p-value of about 1. <laughs> Uh, 0.92 to be exact. Okay, so uh, the independent samples t-text box that you get, the table that you get, has all the information you really need to make a determination. This is always a, a two-tailed test. You cannot change to a one-tailed directional hypothesis test in PSPP. It's always a two-tailed test. So keep that in mind when you're reading this. First and foremost, we get the Levine's test for equality of variances, something really useful. Um, uh, an assumptions test that uh, tells us whether or not our two groups 
are um, homogeneous in their variants. They vary at, at about the same rate um, in, and in the same ways, so to speak. So we get an F value for that. And what we're looking for is a um, significant P value. So that is less than an alpha that we select, which would indicate which would indicate that we have violated. So we have a, uh, a p-value here for Levine's test, which is the f is less than one. So we know that our, our p-value is going to be far greater than even a criterion of 0 0.05. So this then tells us no violation of equal variances. And now we can assume that there are equal variances. But the cool thing about this is that it will give you two rows. Equal variances assumed, equal variances not assumed. And uh, equal variances not assumed, I think, is Welch's t-test. There's not really any indication that that's what it is. But the degrees of freedom does get modified just in case you uh, mess up your variances here right and so t doesn't change the difference uh, the 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 ratio for t doesn't change but the degrees of freedom does and that's what welch's test does when you have um when you don't have equal variances so uh it's not explicit but this is welch's t test here down on the bottom row the top row is what you would use for students t you would say students t or t equals 0 0.09 and then you would have your degrees of freedom and then you have your p values uh your numerator mean difference is very very tiny um there is no difference um in standard error or the standard error of the mean difference is 0 0.07 and you can see that my upper and lower uh confidence interval bounds includes zero which also means that this is not a significant test like there are no differences between these two groups and that's the information that you get. You would have to, con uh, you would have to calculate your own Cohen's d here if you wanted to continue with talking about this test. You would have to calculate that. You could find Cohen's d calculators pretty much everywhere on the on on the internet. So that's how you do an independent samples t in PSPP. If you like this content, please consider leaving a like. Also, please consider subscribing. Please leave your comments and suggestions feedback down below. Stay tuned for more PSPP content tutorials. Thanks for watching. Bye.